how the image has been, has been like India before Chandrayaan 3 landing or the moon landing and India after the moon landing. Neste ano, a Índia conseguiu pousar com sucesso a sua missão lunar Chandrayaan 3. Foi um grande acontecimento para o país e vem sendo muito explorado, sobretudo em termos geopolíticos, pelo governo Narendra Modi. Mas não é só isso. Em 2020, o governo autorizou que empresas privadas começassem as suas operações. Atualmente, são cerca de 140 startups aqui na Índia fazendo exploração espacial. Uma delas é essa aqui onde eu estou, a Skyroot. Eles conseguiram lançar esse foguete aqui atrás de mim, o Vikram S, suborbital, apenas para testes por enquanto e em parceria com a agência espacial indiana. Mas no ano que vem, eles planejam lançar um foguete ainda maior, o Vikram 1, que deve colocar em órbita satélites geoestacionários, satélites que conseguem fazer observação da Terra e também satélites para comunicação. A ideia da empresa é explorar esse mercado que eles estimam em 400 bilhões de dólares. Uh, we have done India's first private rocket launch last year, uh, which has successfully reached space in the very first attempt and making us one of the very few companies, private companies in the world to have achieved a rocket launch to space and that too uh, in the first attempt itself. So one of the things is that whatever we have launched is one of the world's first few all carbon fiber rockets. The entire structure of the rocket is built with carbon fiber. It also uses several innovative uh, uh, technologies inside. It has, for example, it has multiple components which are built using 3D printing. You know, 3D printing is a very novel technology, manufacturing technology, where you can build, you know, multiple hundreds of parts. You can compress into building a single part directly from the design file. You can print it on a machine in metal in just a few days, and then uh, you know it reduces your time cost. And it is the next generation technology which will enable building a lot of components and engines for the rocket. So the next is we are planning a much bigger vehicle which is a seven story building tall vehicle. And uh, that vehicle will be launching uh, in the coming months, the next four months. So it will go to orbit and can launch up to 300 kilograms to orbit. And then we'll also have multiple upgrades to that rocket which can launch up to 800 kilograms to orbit covering most of the small satellites in the market. So today we have around 280 people. Uh, at Skyroot and we have like uh, four uh, factories uh, operational and uh, a lot of uh, design, uh, manufacturing and testing engineers at Skyroot today. Yeah. How, how, how many of them are engineers? Uh, almost like around 95% uh, of them are engineers. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, and all of them uh, uh, you know, are from various streams of engineering like mechanical engineering, electronics engineering, aerospace engineering, etc. So space market is as big as 400 billion dollars today and it is growing, it is set to become a trillion dollars by 2040. So India's current market share is 2% and uh, our ambition is to grow it to as high as 10% over the next 5-10 to 10 years. Yeah, so our major clients are the satellite companies across the world who, who wish to launch their satellites to orbit and uh, we estimate that in the next 10 years up to 30,000 satellites will be launched to orbit by many of these companies across the globe. And these will be our primary customers and our focus is only on small satellites up to you know 500 to 800 kilograms maximum and that covers almost 82 percent of the satellites which will be launched to orbit for the next 10 years uh, it, the policy was opened up in 2020 and uh, so india has an ecosystem of 60 years in the space industry the space program started in 1960s over which it has developed hundreds and hundreds of manufacturers we have established launch pads etc etc so if the infrastructure is available the expertise is available in the country and so it was easier to build a sustainable and successful companies from india building upon the ecosystem already exists so that's the reason why just within three years of opening up the space sector to private players we have 140 uh, private companies already established building their own products and services for the global market so uh, i think us has uh, had a very good private uh, ecosystem for decades now and uh, you know it's very well advanced and uh, china has opened it a few years ago uh, a few years before india and now india has opened it up and even now a lot of uh, opening up in the europe as well you know? and then even emerging countries in the space sector like australia you know, etc have been opening up to private players now right but i think uh, like the biggest impact has been created uh, by uh, you know chinese opening up to the private players india opening up and also now europe also opening up in various countries within europe
Brazilians space programs is just driving now. They are going to, to move forward, looking to nano satellites and micro satellites launching. Yeah, is that a good uh, route for Brazil? Yeah, I think it's the best route for uh, Brazil because uh, in the next uh, few years, or like for, uh, for as long as space exists, smaller satellites will be the core core way of building satellites because today's technology you can have very high resolution satellites and you can have very high large high speed communications even with very small satellites even below 500 kilograms you know, most of it which uh, previously very large satellites used to do now very small satellites can do it with newer technology and to increase coverage the future is not putting one big satellite the future is putting very large number of small satellites to increase the coverage for both communications and our observation so naturally, I think it's the best uh, decision to, I think, uh, invest and to build expertise on nano and micro satellites, which is the right direction. Now the image has is been like India before Chandrayaan three landing or the moon landing, and India after the moon landing because it shows that we're a very advanced and high technology nation to the world, and also. That being done at a fraction of cost than anybody else in the world also shows the kind of cost efficiency you can bring. And this is the similar advantages which the private sector also has. It can be a very, a very, very uh, cost effective program even for the private sector and also very high technologically innovative and highly technologically advanced uh, programs and products and services that can be built by the private sector as well. And uh, even within India, I think it gave inspiration to a lot, lot and lot of people to take up space sciences, to take up STEM education, to take up uh, engineering, uh, uh, you know, uh, engineering courses, etc. It, it, it has, uh, it has inspired more and more people uh, to take up technology as as a career option, and so I think it has like huge impact both within India and also across the world, uh, showing the progress of India to the world. And how was people's reaction? How was people? How was it? How big was that in India? Yeah, I, I think you know, uh, you know it was the it was live streamed across the world, and, uh, and almost everybody in India was hooked to the television during the time of uh, uh, landing, and uh, and this uh, Chandrayaan landing has become the more, world's most watched live stream on YouTube. And this itself shows the kind of interest everybody had within the country and also across the globe. And uh, it was a very magnificent event, and uh, uh, that success filled every Indian with pride. You know, whether they're from the village, the remotest villages in India, to the delight in the country. So everybody was like very inspired with this mission. It also made everybody feel with pride that India has this capability, and also it showed the world what uh, the technology capability which we have, and that it can be done at a fraction of cost uh, than anybody else in the world. How much was it? Uh, it was around seventy-five million dollars. Uh, you know, which was much uh, you know, cheaper than the budget of Hollywood space movies. And now, with this Chandrayaan 3 landing, it has showcased that India had huge technological prowess. You know, and then untapping this youth in the country, and then advancing, skilling, uh, skilling them, and establishing the right infrastructure. I think positions India as the emerging destination globally, both for investments and as a market for the global uh, companies and global, uh, you know, uh, for global countries as well, where uh, you know they can uh, they can rely on India both for technology and human resources, and also for very large long-term partnerships. Considering that it, it will be like consistently an emerging nation globally. And similarly, I think it's very strategic uh, uh, to also have satellites doing weather monitoring, disaster monitoring, greenhouse gas emissions monitoring, you know, and also like uh, have connectivity services for television, etc. And also for like you know telemedicine, you know, for the remotest villages. Uh, and also, in fact, uh, satellites in India uh, help fishermen uh, save like billions of dollars of fuel, uh, you know, by directing them to the right shoals of fish. You know, giving and encouraging their livelihoods to become more efficient and better, and so that's how like you know, Indian space program has affected the common man, you know, the lives of the common man uh, today.